Do you want to use procedural textures in Designer, Affinity Designer? But there doesn't appear to be any way of doing it. There's no feature in Designer. But if you've got Photo and Designer, you can use procedural textures in Designer. And I'm going to show you how in this video. So just finish a bit of coffee off. And with that, now let's just go to Photo. So Affinity Photo. In Affinity Photo, just create a new document. So File and New and Create. And I'm just going to create a shape. Doesn't matter the shape. It just needs to be something. So here's the shape. And click here to fill. The color doesn't matter either. So it's just red. It could be green, blue, etc. What I now need to do is add a live filter layer to this. Go to Layer and then down to New Live Filter Layer and Colors and Procedural Texture. That's all you need to do. And it needs to be associated with this layer. So Procedural Texture. And you can see then you get this blank panel. Not very helpful, but you've got some presets. So you can select that and then just go down to say Checkered. You can change it at any point later. It's live. You can modify it in countless ways. You can have plasma effects. You can have line effects, wave effects, a whole load of different pattern designs. So just close that. Now what you can do is you can go to File and down here to Edit in Designer. You need Finity Photo and Designer in combination. So Edit in Designer. And it will come up and ask you for a file name. Now you can use an existing one, but I'm going to save it to a completely separate one. So save. And I've got a folder and you could create a folder with lots of different effects, maybe a blur effect, maybe a checkered effect and so on. So you could have like 15 or 20 different effects just saved to a folder, which you can bring in and use later. It's a great sort of assets feature in Affinity Photo and Designer. So I'm just going to go with 005. I like to just create it anonymous because I could tweak it at a later point. So I don't want to particularly call it something, but you could call it checkered or blur, blur one, blur two, etc. So 005 and click save. Now we're in designer again and we've got this checkered design, exact the same as before. You see, I've already got that one. Let's just close that one now. It confuses things. So we've got this document. It's 005. And now what I can do is I can change this. I don't have to stay with the rectangle. It doesn't have to be a rectangle. It could be a donut. It could be a star design. So let's just go over here and let's go down to star tool. So here's the star tool and create a star. So here's a star. And what I can now do with the star here, I've got this rectangle. That was just a, something to hold it, a holder. So I can expand this out and you can see the procedural texture there. And I can select it. You can see it's fully blue there. I can then simply select and just drag up. And I can place it on the, and again, the star all becomes blue and release. And then expand this out and you can see procedural texture there. Now it's associated with the star. And you can select the star and you can move it around. Let's just remove this one now, just to don't need it anymore. And I can now resize it. I can also, if I decide, you know what, I didn't really want checkered. I just had that as an initial one because it was the first preset. I can click here and bring up. Sometimes it doesn't always respond. I just click here. That's the key thing. It will bring up this panel and I can change it. So I can go here, smooth bars, select something else, change the smooth size, change the bar count, make it thin, maybe up to a, say, 80 or 60. Something like that, create different designs and again, close. And you can see the start here. Now this document is 005 and I'm gonna use this in a bit of future work. So I'm gonna save this. So I'm just gonna go file and save, but that will overwrite that earlier design, which was the rectangle and checkered. If you don't want that, you can just file and save. Now I can go File and close. And now I don't need photo at all. I've got the file. I've got this file 005 that I've just created. So let's just go to photo. Let's just go here, close it. So it's gone. We've got Affinity Designer 2. I can go to File and New. 
and click create. And now I can access again that design that I've just created. So how to do that? You go to file and place. Now you think, well, wouldn't it have been just easier if I could just copy and paste? Unfortunately, between documents, it doesn't seem to work. I do not know why. When you try it, it just ends up ignoring the live filter layer. Also, if you try and save that live filter layer to the assets folder, it doesn't seem to work either. So as soon as you drag it over into a new document, it seems to have the live filter layer, but the live filter layer is ignored. So I do not know why that, it used to work as far as I remember, but for some weird reason, it doesn't now. So now with this, I can select that file that we just created earlier. So procedural texture 005, click open. And you can see you get the place thing there and you click there. Now, again, go to the move tool. And with that, you can see a slight issue with this. You think, oh, that's great. But what you've got now is you've got a slightly bigger bounding box for your design, which is not ideal, but it's still a vector. So it can be any size, doesn't particularly matter. You can move it around, reposition it. It's just a layer here which you can manipulate, hold down the ultra option key and duplicate, do all the sort of same things, exact the same things, create multiple shapes, tweak it. But if you want to actually modify the design because you've changed your mind, you think, well, I don't want a star. Well, you can still do that, but it does mean editing your, the file you saved earlier. Again, the star in line design. So all you need to do is go here, just here with the star, not, the blue line here, but this, the little thumbnail. So double click and it will go into this document. You're editing that file. You're editing the file that stores this design. So if you change it, it's gonna be changed for all. So you just gotta be aware that you're gonna lose that original star design. So let's just change it. So now if I expand it out again, you can see the procedural texture, but this time, I want, instead of a star, I'm gonna go with a diamond. So a diamond, create that, do exactly the same as before, select the entire procedural texture, as long as that's blue, that bit there, not the star, you don't wanna do that. And then just drag that up into the diamond and you've got procedural texture now associated with that. And click that, remove the star, and you can then reposition it. It doesn't matter the position. You've got the design there. Maybe make it as big as you want. Just fill it, the design itself. Close this document. So just close and it will say save and save it. And now you can see you've got your design in here. And again, you can just modify that. You can move this around. You can see that. Hold down the alter option key, duplicate that design and so on. And you can tweak this in countless ways again. Again, you can just edit it. So if you want to change it again, double click. You're in the document, procedural texture again. Again, with this, I'm gonna not change the diamond, I'm gonna keep the diamond, but this time I'm gonna go here, just go here, change the procedural texture by clicking here. And instead of smooth bars, go for waves. So I've got my waves there. I can change the blend mode, all those sort of things. Not gonna do that, just gonna close it and again, save it. Again, it's overwriting the original document, but that can be, doesn't matter. So save, and again, you can see all of those designs updated, a bit like symbols. So they're all updated very quickly. And of course you can resize this design, click that one, resize that, and so on, rotate it, etc. Apply different effects, maybe go to various layer, layer effects, so layer effects, go for bevel and boss. Just change that, you can see that there, say 3D, and maybe go with, I don't know, outline and so on. So you can do a whole load of things and close, create that. Now there, obviously the other ones are untouched by that. They don't have that layer effect. And that is a way of just adding very quickly procedural textures to designs in Affinity Designer. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.